he starts tapping that bicep and he goes, and his face, I'm talking the meanest look you've ever seen, guys. Rawr! Like that. OMG Nation, I want to remind you guys that I am on a quest. The road to 100,000 subscribers. Right now, my first goal is getting to 5,000 subscribers. Let me show you. I forgot my little card, so let me put it right here. That's what my little card looks like. Help me fill in that little gap to get to 5,000 subscribers. Today, I want to talk about something that I haven't talked about in a long time. Before I get to that, though, I want to thank each and every single one of you that has used my link for Indie Ridge and purchased boots, gloves, and I truly appreciate it. Um, I think I'm going to do a little something for you guys because I appreciate it so much. But I'll get back to that. I want to talk about something that I brought up in one of my previous videos. My previous video of the Dusty Road story. I told you guys about Rick Steiner, the dog face gremlin brothers. I told you guys that I got to wrestle him and uh, that it was, I was in a three man tag match against him. It was me, the live wire Chris Vaughn, and Sonny Siaki against. Norman Smiley, Jorge Estrada, and Rick Steiner. I told you guys before, if you hadn't watched the Dusty Rhodes video, I'm gonna link it right here. I want you guys to go cut off of this video, go watch the Dusty Rhodes video, it's about 20 something minutes long, and then come back and watch this video so you can pick up where I left off. And where I left off at, was that we were going over the match backstage and Rick Steiner looked at Dusty Rhodes and said, is this the guy that no showed you for a little broken nose? And then starts pumping his arm like this going, arr, arr, and starts barking. <laughs> Shoot, barking. It was legit. I went, ah, I hope he's kidding. So we go over the match basically before he even gets there because I think his plane was running behind or something. And, and we go over the match with Steiner on the phone. So we're talking about everything that we're going to do. We're setting up all of our spots. And then... We tell Steiner, hey, you can come in, do this, that, do that. And, and we were working as the heels. We were working as the bad guys because, I mean, it's Rick Steiner, Norman Smiley, and Jorge Estrada. Look these names up. If you don't know these names, look up Sonny Siaki. Look up Jorge Estrada. Look up Norman Smiley and Rick Steiner. You know Rick Steiner. And me. Now... I worked under the name Rick Santel, nature's greatest miracle, Rick Santel. So we go and we do all of our stuff. And at that point, there's something called the hot tag in professional wrestling. And that's where somebody, the good guy is getting pounced on and they call it getting heat. He's getting beat up, beat up, beat up, beat up. We're putting the heat on him. And then, right as... You think all is lost. All of a sudden, one of the good guys slips away and makes the hot tag, so to speak. And then the good guys come running in and he starts just boom, 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 bopping everybody, cleaning house. Well, we had two forms of a hot tag in there. We first started off with Norman Smiley. And then he did a small hot tag to Jorge Estrada. We put the major heat on Jorge Estrada. We just beat him up, beat him up, beat him up. I don't remember exactly how it happened, but I know that he slips out. He makes the hot tag and he makes the hot tag to Rick Steiner. And when we're backstage, 
Steiner said, I'm going to come in. And he said, I'm going to just throw a couple punches to your head. You just feed up, feed up. Just keep feeding up until I give you the Steiner liner. If you don't know what the Steiner liner is, it's his clothesline. And there are many a people that have been afraid to take his clothesline. Lots of people, lots of stories. Now remember, at this point, I'd never met Steiner. He had just come to TNA, or he was just coming to TNA, and I'd never met him. So this is the first time that I was ever meeting him, is when I'm, I'm working him, I'm wrestling him. Jorge Estrada makes the hot tag. Steiner comes in. We all come feeding in. And then, boom, he throws a punch. Bam, right there, solid, baby. I went, boom, I hit the ground. I said, holy smokes. I look over, I roll out of the way. Sonny Siaki comes flying in. Sonny Siaki comes running in. Boom, he knocks down Sonny Siaki. The live wire Chris Vaughn comes running in. Boom, fist to the forehead. He knocks down Chris Vaughn. Rick Santel, that's me. I get up again, and I come running back in, and I go to punch him. He ducks. I turn around. Whoop! Boom! He punches me right in the forehead one more time. Wham! This time, he connected, and it was solid. And I was like, boom! And I hit the ground. I was like, holy smokes, I roll over. And then, he said, keep feeding back up until I give you the Steiner liner. Okay. I come up, I'm like, whoo, I'm a little disoriented because solid punch to the forehead. I bump, I roll out, I'm like, whoa. I'm like, holy smokes, my eyes are jiggling around in my head. I come feeding up and I see him reach out. He sticks one arm out like this and then he taps his arm. I'm like, oh my goodness, here comes the Steiner liner. And brothers, let me tell you, I come running at him, and I've been told by many of people in the past, don't start to bump until he makes contact with you. Because if you do start to bump, he's going to go from 75% to 250% and drill you over the top rope into the bleachers. So here I go. I come running up towards him and I'm thinking in my head, there's no way you're bumping until that man hits you with that Steiner liner. I come running at him. He puts his arm up like this. He starts tapping that bicep and he goes, and his face, I'm talking the meanest look you've ever seen, guys. Like this right here. He rears back and I go, Ooh, baby, here it comes. Boom, and he nails me with the Steiner liner. Like a feathery pillow hit my chest. I went, boom, I took the bump. I rolled over and I go, holy smokes. That was the lightest clothesline I've ever taken in my life. Many people said later on that it looked like he tried to dislodge my head from my shoulders. The most professional clothesline I'd ever taken. It looked like the most vicious clothesline I've ever taken in my life. But I'm still kind of reeling just a little bit from the punches to the forehead. So I roll over towards the turnbuckle. And I remember that Steiner said, after the Steiner liner, start to grab the ropes and feet up and he said then just walk towards me with your head down i'll kind of bump you in the stomach i'll scoop you up around your stomach and i'll flip you up on my shoulder legs going this way on my shoulder your face pointing straight up on my shoulder so your back is laying here then i'm gonna take you be sure and open your legs brother because i'm gonna inverted power bomb you on the top turnbuckle in theory your stomach should hit the top turnbuckle but if your legs are closed you'll break your shins so make sure you open your legs 
Now remember, it's kind of like a reverse backflip that I'm about to be taking at full speed. Well, I'm thinking I need to feed up. And all I remember is reaching for the top rope. And next thing you know, someone grabs me, spins me around, and scoops me. And in the world of professional wrestling, you feed for people, which means that you help them pick you up. So when someone goes to pick you up, you bend in the knees, you push off, you push with your hands. There's this magnificent dance that if done correctly, it looks so seamless that you can't tell that we're helping each other. I didn't help. He just walks over, scoops me up, flips me onto his shoulders like I was a rag doll. A 210 pound rag doll at the time. And then as we're going, he starts walking around with me in the middle of the ring on his shoulders going, arr, arr, arr. and I'm going, holy smokes. And all I can see is I'm like this right here, guys. And all I can see is the ground in the crowd. Arr, arr, arr. And I'm going, oh, and then he goes, he's got his hand on me like this. He's like this and he says, open your legs, kid. I don't want to crush your shins. I'm like, okay, Whew. I mean, this day, brothers, my legs, Whew. I mean, wide open. He takes, backs all the way up to the turnbuckle and takes off running. Arr, arr, arr. Woo! He slammed me so hard on that top turnbuckle. And I was so excited. And I kind of went, Whew. and I forgot to blow out. In the world of professional wrestling, every time you fall, every time you take a bump, you have to blow all of the air out of your lungs. If you don't, and it gets forced out, it knocks the breath out of you. And then, if you've ever had the breath knocked out of you, you know how it is. <laughs> You're struggling just to breathe. Well, for whatever reason, I did not completely blow out. So when that top turnbuckle hit me, I went, <laughs> And next thing I know, I can't breathe. I fall down inside the ring. I'm <laughs> trying to catch my breath. And I just roll out. Because at this point, I don't even remember what I'm supposed to do next except die. <laughs> so here I am. I roll out. I boom, fall onto the concrete. There weren't any mats. I roll over. And there is the bicycle rails outside of the ring. And as I'm kind of rolling over, I see this little kid. And I'm like, whew, I'll be safe there. And I roll over. I kind of scoop myself up against the bicycle racks, which are the gates around the ring. And then next thing you know, I hear someone say, you stink. You're the worst. And I open my eyes, I look up, and this little kid starts dumping his drink on me. I'm, <laughs> I'm laying on the ground. He's dumping his drink on me, and then he finishes it off with popcorn. He's like... <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> I can't breathe. I've got some type of soda being poured all over me and then finished off with popcorn. And I'm sure it was like 5 or $6 popcorn. <laughs> So I'm sitting there, this thing all here, ding, 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 winners! <laughs> I was like, oh my God. So, and Siaki and Chris Vaughn, they come over and they pick me up and we, we roll back <laughs> through the dressing room. And as soon as we come back through the dressing room, Steiner comes up, boom, gives me a big hug, says, that was a fantastic match, brother. You did a great job, great. Hey, let me tell you. Great job, brother. You took the Steiner liner. Awesome. I'm proud of you. And I was like, hey, no problem, no problem at all. I still couldn't breathe. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for the match. It was fantastic. I loved every second of it. Guys, it was a blast. I was honored to wrestle him. And it was an absolute blast. If someone out there watching this has that video, I've never seen it, let me know, contact me, because I really want to see that video. That's it for the Wrestling Road Story. I appreciate you watching this episode.
Please consider subscribing to the channel and helping me. What about me? Hi guys. Hold on. Please consider subscribing to the channel and helping OMG Moto get to 5,000 subscribers. OMG Nation. Give it old school. Thanks for watching, everyone. <laughs>